Hello everybody, today I am going to introduce you to a lovely piece of software known as LibreWolf. Uh, it describes itself as a fork of Firefox focused on privacy, security and freedom. Now this is a particularly interesting web browser, uh, partly because it is just a direct descendant of the latest stable version of Firefox, but what it does is just tweaks it around the edges uh, so that it is just a little bit more privacy, security, and freedom respecting. So uh, their website is pretty straight and to the point, which is always a good thing. They claim to have no telemetry, uh, no experiments, adware annoyances, or unnecessary distractions. Private search, privacy conscious search engine providers such as DuckDuckGo, StartPage, Quant, and more. They actually have circs in their um, uh, standard list of. Uh, of search engines, which is quite good, because Circ, while it does use, uh, or why it is effectively a proxy for any number of search engines, and you can choose which uh, search engines it decides to proxy, uh, it is open source, you can host it yourself, and there are many um, people who have hosted uh, Circ uh, instances and that allow you know public use of it. Uh, it also uh, comes with an ad block included. It comes with uBlock Origin. Uh, it uh, has enhanced security, uh, extension firewall, and other security improvements included without sacrificing usability. Uh, fast updates. LibreWolf is always built from the latest Firefox stable source for up-to-date security and features along with stability. And it's open source, of course. Everyone can participate in the development of LibreWolf. Join us on GitLab and Gitter. So I do have the GitLab page here. I just have to say that it's nice to see, uh, you know, a project is, um, you know, a, a great project like this using uh, GitLab. It's just a step away from, uh, from GitHub, and um, yeah, you know, it's just a, it's just a bit more of a sincere embrace of open source. I understand why people, of course, use GitHub because, you know, if you want to find contributors and developers for your given project. You, you know, you're more likely to find them on GitHub. So I understand the practical implication here. But, you know, if you, you know, but for the more sincere um, sort of commitment to, to open source, then GitLab can be, can be a, you know, is, is, is a really good option there. There are, of course, other options like Gitea and uh, I think Codeberg is one that I hear uh, some people talking about as well. So there, there are good options there in that regard. So anyway, this is the latest version for Linux. Now, um, you can go straight up into uh, to LibreWolf here, uh, and this gives you um, you know the browser here, uh, and it, it uh, it's available here. It says here they got the the Agento edition, Mac OS, Common Files, Windows, Arch, and Linux. Interestingly enough, Windows has coming soon next to it, which I was, so it's I don't know. It just it's just nice that Linux is seen as a, as a, a, a higher tier of priority than than Windows here. It's just not very often we get that particular upper hand. So I thought that was quite amusing. So um, there are two uh, ways that you can get it in sort of the more should we say user friendly capacity. You can either get the app image or the flat pack. Now I've tried the app image on both my Zubuntu machine and my Manjaro machine here, and they both work without issue whatsoever. So um, yeah, the app image is quite good. Now, when it comes to web browsers, you can always sort of weigh up the pros and cons as to whether or not you want to use the app image because web browsers by far and away work best when you have the latest version, they're fully updated. Um, with some pieces of software, I do like the app images because I like to know what version I'm running. Sometimes when it's like you're saving files or you're using files, you want to save them in a particular version. Uh, and also, um, sometimes you you know, like if you're halfway through a project, you don't want to risk breaking a program through through an update procedure when the rest of your system might follow suit. But with uh, something as you know serious as a web browser, when it comes to things like security and privacy and whatnot, uh, app images aren't necessarily. But the app image does work fine, and um, you know, take that as you will. I've only been using this for today, so I don't know. Um, and I've been playing around with it today. So I don't have full extensive knowledge of the ins and outs of how this works. I don't know if, for example, it gives you a um, like a little bit of information or it gives you a little bit of a pop-up when uh, a new version is released or anything like that. But um, there is also a flat pack. Now the flat pack, interestingly enough, does not come from Flat Hub as most flat packs seem to uh, anyway. Uh, it actually just gives you a dot flat pack file. And then what you can do is you can go into a, a terminal and you just go flat pack 
install and then point it to the file. You don't even need sudo, it will ask you for your sudo, um, your admin password as and when it is required, and you can get it up and running that way. So that's kind of nice. It's like, it, to me, it fully embraces that open source decentralized attitude. It's it's not just by the letter of free and open source software, but it is. it seems very much in the spirit of it. And I really like projects that sort of fully embrace and fr fully throw themselves in this. Now, um, when it comes to, you know, like, it, it, one, one of the reasons I also like that they have gone down the app image and flat pack route is that um, it's a project that seems to be very resource resource conscious, that they don't want to sort of like reinvent the wheel. They don't want to, um, you know, have to distribute lots of different like .deb packages, RPM packages and all this kind of stuff, which sometimes can like really slow down a project, especially if it's a small project that only has a limited number of, um, of contributors. So I, uh, I really do actually quite like um, that kind of mentality towards it. And of course, it being open source, distributions can include it in their repositories as and when they see fit. And I would really like to see this make it into repositories. It doesn't always because sometimes, you know, it's just like the de facto Firefox is just put in its place. And that's fine. Like I don't have huge problems with Firefox, but I must admit them keep, keep pushing things like Pocket. <sighs> Terrible. And that horrendous thing where they keep recommending uh, various different add-ons to change how sites look and all that guys that is so irritating I turn it off and then after a Firefox update I'm getting these horrendous pop-ups of like oh here's a recommended add-on that you might like you know do you want to watch YouTube in this particular color scheme and all this and it's like no I just want to get on with my life and just use the web browser as and when so I've got the web browser up here um, I have been testing it around today uh, and I really like it. There are some, and I, what I've done here, what I've got here, I've left it as default as possible, right? Um, interestingly enough, some of the buttons on the top here are in slightly different positions. Not entirely sure what that's about, but it's easy enough to, to, to work with. Um, and I have checked around things like I've, I've checked Twitch. Twitch works um, uh, perfectly as you might expect. Uh, I've also got here the... Um, this is just a random video I found on YouTube, but this works quite well. Um, and it's, yeah, oh yeah, I remember why I picked this one now, because it's got 60 frames per second, which you can, um, there you go, is, uh, uh, th uh, this video is not going to be recorded in 60 frames per second, so it's kind of useless me demonstrating it uh, that way, but, um, yeah, like I have yet to see uh, any kind of uh, limited in, in functionality. But like I said, I've only been testing this uh, today, so uh, so so you know, take this uh, as you wish. Um, but yeah, and uh, there's some you know preferences. Like like largely, this is uh, Firefox, just with you know rather minor tweaks here. Um, you can't play, of course, uh, DRM controlled content here. So you know, it it is a little bit more like. If you are a bit more die-hard free software, this is this is just a little bit um, more in your wheelhouse, I would imagine. It embraces the spirit, and it embraces the spirit of open source. Like Firefox and Mozilla have created a wonderful browser here. I really do like the Firefox browser, and one of the reasons I like it is because it's open source, which means if it goes in a direction that you're not entirely comfortable with, you can fork it, you can base another browser on it, and this is an example of it. Now, don't get me wrong, there are problems with uh the uh and you know like the uh, i think it's the gecko engine that uses that firefox uses and uh, as i understand it the gecko engine d is not as easy to drop into other browsers it's not easy to change around and manipulate in the same way that the uh blink or um webkit uh, engines are which um is one of the reasons why when you see other spin-off browsers that are based on other web engines like blink and, and webkit you don't often see them based on gecko because it's just easier to use Blink and WebKit uh, from a developer standpoint. So if I could, you know, one of the significant criticisms leveled at, at Mozilla and Firefox is that their their browser is not particularly easy to chop up and change. Most browsers based on Firefox tend to look like Firefox, tend to be very Firefoxy in how they behave. You can't really manipulate them in particularly creative ways in the same way that you can with Blink and WebKit. There's a bit of a grumble, uh, not necessarily my grumble, but you know, when I see it hold really good developers back from creating great stuff with you know non google coded stuff it can be a touch on the uh, on the frustrating side but a minor gripe at best and you know let's be honest libra brow you know libra uh, libra wolf here is a perfect example of, of of open source and free software working um in um in, in a good way you know like the heavy lifting has been done by mozilla 
obviously. Um, and and they say that right on the front. You know, they're not. They're, you know, like Libra Wolf are not trying to pretend that it's it's anything other than it's it's not. It's it's Libra Wolf, a fork of Firefox focused on privacy, security, and freedom. That's all you all you fundamentally need to know. So uh, yeah, give it a look. Uh, it's LibraWolf-Community.GitLab.io. Link, of course, will be in the description. Give it a go. Tell me what you think down in the comments section. Um, and also find me on Mastodon. I would like to actually thank the folks over on Mastodon um, for actually uh, letting me know about this. This just came up in a in a conversation, and uh, and I just felt I had to tell you know tell you guys about it. Um, there are some great like if you guys are not on Mastodon and you kind of like social media. Uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth poking around there. Um, it's it's the only social media that I'm consistently on. If I'm completely honest, it's open source. It's distributed. It's owned by the people who use it. It's free of advertisers and it's free of uh, uh, you know you don't even get those social media influences. Like you know it's 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 it is it is genuinely uh, genuinely an organic platform that sort of you know it it harkens back to older days when not everything had adverts slapped over it. So anyway, that's just my two cents. And it's a bit, you know, I'm starting to ramble now. So um, yeah, check out Libra Wolf. Uh, so far, so good. Not come across any bugs, not come across any problems. And the app image is is great. Even if you just want to give it a test out, you know, the app image, they're great for testing out pieces of software that you don't necessarily want to commit to installing. Um, and yeah, I, I love app images. I've got a little folder, a sync thing folder, where I put all my app images in, and then it just distributes them across all the machines that... Um, that I would use that piece of software on. That allowed me to use it across my uh, Zubuntu machine here over to my Manjaro machine, common folder of app images. It allows me to test an app image to see if it works on Arch-based systems or Ubuntu-based systems. It's great. Um, so yeah, big fan of And also, like, it means that if I nuke and pave uh, one of my machines, it means that I get all of the, the uh, applications that I'm currently running and the versions that I understand them in uh, right there set up bang out of the box in a, in a moment of in, you know in a, in a matter of minutes so like i said i'm going to uh, close this video before it turns into too much of a ramble but thank you guys very much for joining me and uh, until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome toodaloo